Looking to stake a claim on some security wisdom in a hurry? Well, you're in luck, Keyboard Cowboy. It's time for another Black Hills Information Security Nugget. Get ready to ride. We're cracking some passwords. Brought to you by Black Hills Information Security. Now here's John Strand. Hello and welcome. My name is John Strand. And in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about password cracking, how we password crack, why we password crack, and some tips on where you can go with your password cracking adventures and computer security. As always, I'm going to be using the virtual machine that we use in my pay what you can classes for intro to SOC core skills and intro to security. On the left hand side, I have the instructions and on the right hand side, we have the place where we're going to do said instructions. So I'm going to open up a command prompt on my Windows computer system, and I also have PowerShell running, I'm going to disable antivirus. Uh, antivirus and password cracking tools tend not to go together very well, like at all. So if you're going to set up password cracking, you're probably going to have to have a system that is dedicated and isolated from the rest of the environment so you can crack these passwords. Uh, using tools like Hashcat many times requires very specific configurations and very specific con uh, security settings. So you want to be mindful of that. I got a lot of angry red here. That just means my AV is not running, which is exactly what I was trying to do. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to jump over to my command prompt. I'm going to navigate into the Hashcat directory. It's a little bit out of date, but it's the same concept, the same switches and same everything. And the first set of passwords that we are going to crack um, is we're going to crack some NT password hashes. Now, whenever you're looking at a Windows system, it only stores two types of password hashes. Uh, the first one is landman. Um, that is a straight DES encryption of the string um, KGS exclamation point at pound prompt dollar sign, where it uses your password as the key. Um, and it splits it into two seven character sections completely independent of each other. Very, very easy, quick to crack. You don't see that being used all that often. You will see the password hashes for Landman when you dump them, but modern systems, they'll begin with AADB3, which is the hash of padding, which means it's not actually storing them. But all modern Windows computer systems will store NT password hashes. And NT password hashes are merely a straight MD4 hash of the password. Now, I used Hashcat to crack these passwords over here. And we've got a bunch of funny switches. I'm going to give you a cheat sheet that will explain what these different switches are. But down at the bottom, it was able to crack a number of the passwords. It was able to crack um, Jenny's password, which is 8675309, password, fender, and rabbit1. So it was able to crack those relatively quickly. But Hashcat also has the capability to crack a wide variety of different password hashing formats. It also has the capability of cracking uh, passwords that are straight MD5. Now, you tend to see straight MD5 password hashes on a lot of modern web servers today. Well, not modern web servers. You should be using something like bcrypt, but we still see people using MD5, and it is absolutely a crackable uh, password hash. Now, let's spend a few minutes while it's initializing and using my OpenCL drivers on my VM to start cracking passwords and explain what exactly Hashcat is and why it's so incredibly badass. What it's doing is it's actually leveraging the GPU on a computer system for password cracking. This is a kind of big deal because your GPU is actually a collection of a whole bunch of little itty bitty CPUs working on problems together in unison. If you look at a graphics card, when it's calculating like water, light going through like trees or hair, it's redoing the exact same mathematical algorithm over and over and over again. And your graphical processing user, unit actually cracks passwords by doing this cracking in massive parallelism, of separating out that cracking algorithm across a whole bunch, thousands, of little individual CPUs on your GPU. And that's what it's doing. Well, not here. Here I'm tricking it because I'm using the OpenCL drivers because it's a VM. Long conversation, not something you have to worry about. Point is, don't try to crack passwords using Hashcat in a VM. Use a real system with real GPUs and you're going to get some very, very good results out of it. Got a handful of additional things I want to share with you. I didn't go through in depth what Hashcat is doing here because we have a fantastic cheat sheet at the URL. If you just Google Hashcat Cheat Sheet Black Hills InfoSec, it'll take you to Kent's wonderful little write-up, and it'll take you directly to a PDF 
that has the full cheat sheet on how to use Hashcat. All the different types of cracking algorithms that you can use for a wide variety of different password algorithms and how you can identify those algorithms merely based on looking at the individual hash itself. Also how you can do things with a variety of options, the attack mode, how you can use different files. Another great utility is the DPAT toolkit from Kerry Roberts, which takes cracked passwords and gives you a breakdown of how strong your passwords are in your organization. And this brings me to my final point. Why do we crack passwords? Many organizations crack passwords for the purposes of trying to get people to not use a weak password. Now, the problem with that is when you're cracking passwords, you're not actually testing what people are doing for passwords. You're auditing your technical controls around your password complexity. If a user creates a weak and very crackable password, it's not necessarily their fault. It's the fault of the policy. So don't use this as a mechanism to identify and sniff out weak passwords in your environment to get users to change them, but rather use it as a tool that validates the technical controls in your environment to make sure that your users can't use insecure passwords. Also, crack service accounts. Check, check those. What I tend to recommend is dump the passwords, store them in a, a secure location, wait a little bit, or force a password reset across the domain, and then crack the passwords. So you're still auditing the technical controls, you're not cracking active passwords that users are currently using, and you're not gonna make anyone mad in the process of doing it. So this is a very quick overview. If you like this, check out our Pay What You Can classes at Anti-Siphon Security Training. We've got some pretty cracking good Paid classes as well. It's a pun, bad pun. But I would also like you to kind of click like and subscribe down below. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to see you in a class or in another video. If you stuck around this long, like and subscribe to get more Black Hills InfoSec nuggets. And check out these other videos while you're at it. See you on the range, keyboard cowboy.